All right, I guess we'll get started here. All right, so my name is Alex Wilkinson. I'm the Director of Marketing for Finmo, and I've just put some slides together for you guys to give an overview on marketing for uh, the modern digital broker. Um, you may have noticed in the landscape, um, brokering is still a highly relationship-based business, but you might have noticed things like Rocket Mortgage and True North Mortgage and, and stuff like that that's kind of um, creeping into the industry, uh, which is getting a little bit away from relationship-based and more into um, uh, marketing base and, and things like that and ease of use and, and simplicity. Uh, so this is, I'm, I'm really glad that you're all here and interested in marketing because I think it's going to become pretty, pretty essential in the future for uh, brokers to have at least uh, some understanding of, of marketing and how that all works. So um, yeah, let's just uh, get started here. I have this uh, cool quote too from Henry Ford that says, a man who stops advertising to save money is like a man who stops a clock to save time. Um, and I just, yeah, <laughs> just a cool quote. All right, so what is marketing? Uh, marketing is not just advertisements, it's any action that persuades a person to take a desired action. So if you think of marketing that way, instead of thinking of marketing in terms of advertisements, it will help you come up with ideas that are outside the box or uh, game-changing ideas. It's another word for those, or another name for that. Um, so an, a quick example would be my, my broker friend and I printed t-shirts that simply said, ask me anything about mortgages, and we wore them whenever we went out to a bar, uh, which if you're in the industry is all the time. Three people asked us about mortgages uh, on the first night and one refinanced with us and the cost of the shirts was $40. So it's pretty unconventional, but that is a form of, of advertising. So it's not just ads. Uh, here's some rules uh, to help you if you are designing an ad uh, to keep it um, effective. Uh, these are generally agreed upon by most experienced marketers. Um, I don't think there's many people who disagree with a lot of these, but um, I'll just go through them quickly for you. Number one, there must always be a clear offer or call to action. Uh, people are bombarded all day by tons of headlines and then they see and hear things all day. If it's not very clear and takes very little cognitive effort to understand what you want them to do, they'll move on pretty quickly. So um, often you'll see uh, like amateur advertisements where there's just a lot of text and multiple calls to action and it's a little bit confusing as to what they want you to do. Um, that's not ideal. You really want to keep it concise. You really want to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, when you can. Um, so number two kind of loops back to number one uh, and reinforces it. You always want to give clear instructions. Uh, if anything you write is confusing, people just won't put the cognitive effort into understanding it and they won't buy. And then in our case, they won't borrow. Um, so always keep it as clear and concise as possible. Uh, number three is going to be a recurring theme throughout this entire presentation. Uh, your advertising medium must be directly trackable and measurable always. Like that's just how modern marketing works. It's, it's different than it used to be. Uh, you know, in the, you say in the fifties where you did uh, radio ads and, and TV ads and you weren't really sure that it was working except maybe anecdotally you notice more people coming into your store. Nowadays, every, every dollar spent um, has an accountable result. And I'll get into how that's tracked and how, how advertisers do that these days uh, in the slides to come. Uh, number four would be always use strong ad copy. Don't be a hero. If you're not a strong writer, get someone who is to go over it because it's free and could increase the effectiveness of the ad. Um, the messaging is always going to be the most important, but I mean, you know, getting, refining your ad copy is free. So just when you can, just try and make it as, as good as possible, as simple, as clear as possible. Uh, number five would be to write emotionally, not factually or professionally. This might strike a lot of mortgage brokers as strange, but you're not actually advertising mortgages. People don't really actually like the mortgage. They want the home ownership. They want the feeling of owning the home. So you're advertising that more so than you're advertising a mortgage. Um, Cause you know, people, if you didn't advertise a Lamborghini, people would still buy it. Um, but like people wouldn't go get mortgages for fun, right? So it's like, that's not exactly what you're trying to advertise. You want that feeling of, of, of actually owning the home and getting the home or something along those lines. Uh, number six would be to be bold in your claims and promises. Uh, it's a pretty noisy field out in the advertising uh, market. So if you're not making big bolds and claims like everyone else, if you're too timid in what you write, uh, it's not going to be exciting enough to get noticed and no one's going to like, you know, no one's going to read it or pay much attention to it. It just won't get noticed at all. Uh, seven, you can give a reason to respond immediately. This is, is not always suitable for our industry, but uh, when you can, it's pretty cool to do this. It'll, it'll increase the effectiveness of your advertisements. Uh, if you can tie an offer to a deadline, sometimes in our industry, you see that done with uh, Bank of Canada, like prime rate changes and stuff like that. If rates are going up or down, uh, people sometimes try and uh, do ads around that, which can be effective. Um, uh, you can also restrict the offer to a limited number of customers. I've actually never seen anyone do that, but it, it's a good idea if someone could try some kind of ad campaign along those lines. 
uh, and see the promise of a bonus gift for action is pretty common actually in our industry where you see people giving uh, gifts for referrals and you know steak knives and whatnot. So those are all ways to just kind of increase effectiveness of, of ads um, to you know to give people uh, some incentive. Uh, number eight is results rule period. If you're not seeing significant results, stop and concentrate your efforts elsewhere. A lot of people get hung up in minutia of an ad that's working like only okay and they start just tweaking one or two words and then seeing how that does. And like, in my opinion, that's a waste of time. Just, just try a bunch of different styles of messaging and then, and then start like, you know, shut the ones off that aren't working. Don't just tweak them a little bit. Just try and come up with uh, something that resonates with your audience. All right. So uh, unique selling propositions are awesome. Uh, they're called USPs. You might hear that when you start uh, your marketing uh, or start looking into marketing. Uh, so the mortgage brokering market has a lot of advertising regulation and little variance in products which can be offered. And that makes coming up with original marketing ideas to separate ourselves from the competition difficult. Uh, that doesn't mean it can't be done. You know, those people coming up with unique selling propositions generally have them front and center in their ad campaigns and are often successful. Um, so unique selling proposition is what it is, is just something you're advertising that makes you unique from everyone else. So I have a couple examples here. This one's from a realtor. They have uh, similar industry restrictions to us, so I felt it was fair to tease this as an as a example. Um, so this one has guaranteed sold or will buy it. I think that might be some kind of Remax guarantee or something like that. Um, anyways, this, this realtor group prominently advertises this on billboards and everywhere in the city. Um, and, and it seems to be working for them, so that's an example of, of a unique selling proposition. Here's another one from our industry would be True North Mortgage. Uh, their unique selling proposition is very strange and it's basically to have branches. Uh, you know, so it doesn't have to be something obvious. Like it, it is a unique selling proposition that they have so many locations. So that's kind of outside the box thinking as well there. Um, so funnels is another word you're definitely going to hear about. Uh, funnels are fun marketing jargon for marketing processes that involve steps. Um, when you're starting out, you probably don't need to get too heavy into funnels. It's better to, to make sure your messaging is resonating with your, with your target audience before you build a funnel because funnels take a while to build and are not uh, easy to iterate on as, as easy as it is to just change an ad around and, and change your messaging. So in a literal sense, what a funnel is, is we can see the traffic coming in here from uh, looks like Google, Twitter, and Facebook into an opt-in page uh, for what's going to be, what's, gonna, what's called a lead magnet. And we'll get into that in a second. And that's going to give them a download of some valuable PDF or some instruction, like something that they want. And then it sends them an email and then it starts a sequence. They start sending more and more emails, trying to sell them something. And it's basically just trying to build trust uh, enough for someone to buy uh, some kind of, um, or do some kind of uh, action for your company. Funnels are better for higher value um, products. And the same, same thing would be in our industry because you know, the mortgages, uh, well, yeah. So, I'll just wear this another way. Um, if you want to build a funnel, funnels are good at filtering. So if you want to filter users out, which you might online, because you're going to probably find that you get a lot of people who are rejected from uh, banks and, and already from brokers. And a funnel can kind of help you refine the, the people you're getting as a result of a process to kind of try and just get the best people that you actually want. That's another way to think about a funnel. It's probably more uh, significant or more relevant to our, our business. So, um, yeah, that's what funnels are. They're just processes on the on, online for marketing. And that's, you know, they're nothing too fancy. They just sound fancy. All right, so lead magnets, as we just talked about, are uh, additional marketing jargon for something of value that you have that you will trade someone else for their email address or contact info. Uh, so here's some examples of lead magnets, uh, checklists and stuff like that, which you could easily do in our industry as well for, for someone buying a home, you know, things to make sure that they've done or need to do uh, in order to have a smooth mortgage transaction. Uh, people are interested in things like that. So you could use that to collect some email addresses and try and find some, some clients that way. Uh, cheat sheets, et cetera, all this stuff. Um, you'll see it everywhere because it, it does work. Lead magnets are, are fairly effective at, uh, at getting emails and contact info, which you can then farm. And I think that's our next slide actually is email and SMS lists. So what happens with those lead magnets, you collect, you collect all of those um, emails from potential clients and then you start farming them. So what you do is you just periodically send out emails that are full of more lead magnets and then pull them into your funnels. Uh, and then you try and eventually get that person to, uh, to, um, you know, be a borrower uh, for your brokerage, you know, buy a house and use you to fund it. Um, so MailChimp, you might be familiar with, they're the leading platform for email list management. Uh, so you might've heard of them. And so, yeah, so this is just an example 
of what you can expect. Email lists are a little tricky because a lot of people don't really open their email always. So you're not 100% guaranteed that you're going to be able to reach everyone on your email list every time. That's why you'll often notice companies send you like, you know, three or four emails a week sometimes that kind of spam you because they know that this is an open rate for, for uh, as an example, this is pretty typical, like a 12% open rate. Um, you, they can, open rates can be up to about 30% if you have a really high quality list of people who are really interested in your product. But like, no matter what, when you send an email out, not everyone's going to read it. So that's why you get uh, so much spam in your, in your mailbox. People know that and they know they need to send like three or four messages to get most people on the list to have seen it. Um, yeah, so that's how email lists work. There's also SMS lists, which are, uh, you get phone numbers and you text them. They're a little trickier and the laws around them are a little bit more strict than email marketing. So, uh, yeah, but if, but, uh, texting, actually you get a higher open rate. So texting is actually awesome if you can do it. Okay. So what type of marketing should mortgage brokers be doing? Uh, mortgage brokers should be engaged in direct marketing and direct marketing is any form of marketing where you can directly determine the results from the effort and ad spend. Uh, I would personally argue that brand marketing, which is surprisingly common for, for mortgage brokers, I don't know why, uh, is actually useless um, and would advise people to stay away from it. Uh, so an example of, of, of brand marketing would be sponsoring a symposium with your logo or something in the back end of a screen. Like if you think about it, if you can't get someone to do an action with a Facebook ad that has a lot of text saying something you want them to do and reasons to do it, just putting your logo up is just visual noise. Like, you know, it's not going to get the results you want. It's not going to be super effective. Uh, banks and Coca-Cola do it because people are already attached to the products and they already know. Um, and and they already, you know, they're already familiar with it. It just reinforces something that they already know. Uh, so this kind of, it's kind of more reserved for larger corporations with large ad spends. And it's not really probably what you want to be doing as a, as a broker. I would say that you definitely want to be doing direct marketing. And if you do it right, you should be able to say things like I spend $1,000 for every online mortgage lead that completes the mortgage with me through Facebook and $800 for every closed lead that comes through Pinterest. Uh, and that's probably about the cost per lead that is standard. I've seen it down to about 500 per closed deal, which is pretty low and up to about 1500 per closed deal, which is still workable, but pretty high. But in that range is probably, you know, you could get lucky and have something that really resonates and get lower than that if you're really lucky. But that's about the average because it's not, not just to get someone to apply or whatever, but it's someone to actually close too, right? So it's, uh, but that's still a pretty good um, uh, return on ad spend, which is, I'll, sh I'll just explain that here because it's an example of it right here. Um, so return on ad spend is just simply uh, for the amount of money you paid in advertising, like what the multiplier is for your return on it. So this is a ridiculously high unrealistic uh, return on ad spend here of 7.9. So every dollar you spend, you get basically eight back. Um, you probably would typically want in, in our business, you might see like the two to three range four if you're really, if your marketing is working really well. Um, so uh, how that's calculated is it's simply, Oh, I, I think I already went over that. It's just, yeah, it's just your ad spend and then, and then the returning amount. Um, and we have a little bit of a problem with our industry in tracking uh, return on ad spend. And the problem is that uh, we don't fund immediately. Like, so when we spend, uh, you know, like some ad spend in September, it might take two or three months before that mortgage actually funds. So it can be a little bit tricky to, tr to calculate our return on ad spend. Um, there's ways to get around that. And there's, there's other tr techniques we can use. Um, we can use projections and stuff like that to kind of try and figure out an approximate return on ad spend. But uh, it is important to be tracking all of this stuff and where the deals are coming from. And over time, like over a year or so, you'll be able to hone in on your actual return on ad spend. And knowing that number is very important and it, it helps you increase your ad spend because you mathematically know that when you increase your ad spend, what you're, what you're expecting to get out of it. Uh, so return on ad spend is a very key metric that you will be, uh, that, that will be very important to you in the future. Uh, if you don't track your return on ad spend, if you don't track the people that your online advertising has, uh, has gotten you and, and the amount of money they made you, you'd be missing a lot of these fields. Like you wouldn't have this purchase field. You wouldn't have cost per results. You would be missing a lot of information and you'd be kind of flying blind in your marketing. So that's not ideal. We definitely want to track the success of our, our marketing campaigns so that we're comfortable uh, increasing the budgets. Uh, so examples of direct marketing could be online advertisements, door-to-doors or door-to-door -door sales, flyers, database marketing, promotional letters, outdoor advertising, email lists, SMS text messaging lists, magazine adverts, coupons, phone calls, postcards, websites, et cetera. There's a whole bunch of these. Um, you must make, for, for them to be direct marketing, you must make all forms of them track, like you must, they must be trackable. Uh, so sometimes things are not inherently trackable, but we can make them trackable. Um, so I'll go into the next slides how to do that. Um, 
how, here's how you make anything trackable. This is an, a standard that exists on the internet and it's something called a UTM tag and you can add them to any URL as a parameter. Um, this is a little bit technical, but, but uh, there are generators and stuff on the internet that'll help you make these if you need them. Um, so this is just an example of how they work. Uh, this would be a link to say your, your website and then here is your website with the UTM parameter attached. Everything after this question mark is a parameter. So these parameters are generally understood across the internet by various uh, websites like Google Analytics understands what this is and Facebook understands what this is and they can make use of it to figure out where your traffic is kind of coming from. So uh, in this link specifically, uh, this obviously uh, the, the medium is cost per click and the campaign is free consultation. So this would be an ad on Facebook. And then if people click that link, I know exactly what ad they saw on Facebook and, and uh, that just kind of helps me out in Google Analytics figure out where people are coming from. Um, so here's an example of that actually working in Google Analytics. So if you had that UTM tag, you see campaign, here's H brand, there's source and medium here as well. So you can sort things uh, by, the, by the UTM parameters. I know this is a little technical. Uh, so source would be here, medium and campaign. So you could you know, sort all your, your campaigns and stuff or yeah, like you can, you can just track everything and break it all down any ways you want, figure out what kind of uh, people are looking into certain ads of yours. It just helps uh, to keep everything tracked and, and to know where everything's coming from. Uh, so to make that simpler, because I was pretty technical, you just use a UTM generator and it just ha has these, you know, three questions and then it'll, it'll turn out your UTM link that you start using on um, your website or whatever to make sure that you know where people are coming from. Uh, so you can add UTM tags to anything on the internet. So it's like, or any link on the internet. So that, that makes it handy. And a fun fact is it stands for urchin tracking module, which is kind of a weird name for it, but that's what it stands for. Uh, Finmo also makes direct and trackable marketing easy. So if you don't want to get technical with UTM tags or you're not really in integrating with a whole bunch of systems and you need to use them for some reason, uh, the easiest way to do it is to use uh, inside Finmo our lead generation and referral features. Uh, I can actually, I'll just demonstrate them now, just like it says here. Uh, what you can do is you add referral links. So we'll just add a new one. Say we have a realtor or something. This will be realtor Julia. And we'll create a new refer and the type will be realtor. Be realtor Julia, Julia Realty. Her phone number will be that, and her email should be juliatrealtor.com. And we'll assign her to the team defaults whenever a deal comes through her new link. All right. So if you haven't used the referral or the uh, the the lead generation feature, what happens is uh, we give Realtor Julia this link that we just created. It'll take her clients to a marketing funnel that will then. Uh, show up in our, in our Finmo account so we can actually do the, more, the mortgage deal. Um, so what we can do and how this helps us track stuff is say for uh, Realtor Julia, obviously no one submitted an application there yet, but for Sean's referral link, say we've been, he's been referring to us for a while, we can just see the deals that he sent us. And that'll give us an idea, uh, an ability to track um, the conversions through sources such as realtors and other people that we know, um, as well as you can also, oops, let's click that here. Uh, you can see that you could use this for almost anything like, you know, realtors, lawyers, anyone, you know, in person, those are hard to track online anyway. So you kind of have to use the system for those. Uh, if you wanted to, you could use them for your website through Facebook and everything. And you could kind of just keep it all inside Finmo in a simple way. Uh, that will, that will be sufficient for most people. Uh, if it's, and it is a lot simpler than UTM tags. So that's why we have that. It's just a much easier way to track all your deals and keep them inside Finmo. So that is uh, definitely a useful feature. Finmo is very marketing forward because myself and the CEO have a strong marketing background. So uh, it, a lot of, a lot of Finmo uh, is designed specifically for uh, to be easy to market. Um, so how much did I spend on marketing? This part is why a lot of people don't start marketing in the first place is because they see advertising spends in the millions and billions of dollars. And there's two reasons they don't like that. Uh, one, you know, th that just seems like a ton of money to spend, even though it makes money, it's still daunting to spend that much. But no, you can actually start with five or ten dollars to do an ad online. You can start to see to get some statistics and see if it's resonating. Uh, you don't have to spend any money at all. Typically, you actually don't want to spend much money at first until you find some promising uh, results from creating an ad, and then you actually boost the spend on it and try and get uh, the deals to come through that way. So you do start pretty small, and then after that, you should, um, yeah, uh, number two here. Uh, after that, you then put a few hundred bucks on some promising campaigns and see if you close some deals and figure out your uh, return on ad spend. Uh, so, and then if your return on ad spend is looking good to or greater is awesome, ramp up the spend, uh, ad budget for even small companies can often reach millions of dollars, uh, because it's making the money. It's not costing the money, right? It's making the money. 
So economy of scale applies. Spending $1 to make $2 is all right, but spending $1 million to make $2 million is great. And that's just a return on ad spend of two. Uh, so that's, yeah, it's not, a, it's not as scary as you think because you're, you're actually calculating with like a mathematical certainty basically how much you're going to make. So increasing your ad spend becomes less and less daunting as you uh, refine your ad sets and, and start seeing your, your return on ad spend and all your results. But uh, yeah, start small. Definitely start small and then ramp it up. Uh, so how do you get started? There's some great resources for you ready to get started. There's a lot of digital marketing tutorials out there. Marketing is the largest industry in the world, uh, mostly because it makes money. Um, so uh, there's a ton of content on marketing everywhere. So this is just a quick YouTube search for make Facebook ad. And these four fellows here will tell you how to do it step by step. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not super difficult. So if you are looking into doing Facebook ads, I'm sure all of those uh, videos will suffice. Uh, Measure School is a YouTube channel that I like of a guy who I don't understand why he does it for free, but makes thousands of videos on how to do basically everything. And they're all very good. Uh, he can get it, he even gets into pretty advanced stuff. If you ever need like really, if you're ever doing some really pretty advanced marketing, he seems to have almost everything covered in, in a simple in simple tutorials. Uh, of course, there's lynda.com tutorials, Udemy courses and, and Facebook certification. They have their own course for Facebook advertising as well. I think it's free um, if you want to be Facebook certified. Uh, so that's just, that's just a few ways to get started. Uh, on online ads. Here's just some example ads that I've run uh, for a while, a while ago that uh, did fairly well. If you want to start with these, like you can start to see what the click through rates are and, and, and tweak your, your audience and your targeting and try and get um, click through to it. What you would do with this ad is you would basically link it to the Finmo lead generation funnel uh, right from the ad. So you'd click learn more and it would just go here. That's a good thing to do. You could also do, you know, a splash page or something before they even get here. Uh, tweak it a bit and try and get people to uh, or as many people as possible to actually fill out the application. So that's just a, that's just one example of an ad. Here's another example. Um, I have no idea why this ad does well because usually, usually a picture like this would not do well because it's just a guy taking stuff out of a box. It's really not exciting, but for some reason people love this picture. Um, and it just says research reports that help you see differences between lenders for free. And this is getting into like USP territory, Maybe you have some kind of research report that helps see the difference between lenders, or maybe you want to make one and that would become a USP and a lead magnet for you. Like you're, you're providing some kind of value and you're dropping them right into that uh, instead of directly asking for the mortgage uh, for their mortgage business. So that's, that's what this kind of ad would go towards. Um, yeah. So that's just two examples of, of ads that have worked for, for myself in the past. Uh, so maybe a good place to start and it gives you an idea of kind of like the stuff you're kind of trying to make. Um, here's a pro tip, use your database to create a lookalike audience. Uh, it used to be easier on, on Facebook to target basically rich people, but now it's considered discriminatory. So they made it pretty difficult. There are ways around it because obviously rich people make great mortgage clients. Um, so if you have over hundred clients in your database, uh, the more, the better you can probably, I think, I think the minimum is hundred. Uh, you can create a lookalike audience on Facebook and advertise to that audience. So it'll find people who have a similar lifestyle or whatnot to the hundred people you gave the, you, you told Facebook were your clients and it'll start advertising to people like those people, which obviously is a good audience for, for, for their mortgage business. Um, you can also refine it further by indicating that you're looking for people that are like the people you have in your database, but are also actively looking for a mortgage. And that would be an awesome, uh, audience to start marketing to, uh, because obviously they're going to be pretty likely to, um, to need a mortgage to be able to qualify and all that. Um, so this is a little bit more of a technical part because we talked about, uh, last, um, the last webinar and at least uh, on the last release video, if you watched it, uh, Finmo now has, uh, the Facebook pixel integration, like included right in it. Uh, I'll explain what that means. Cause it's, it's, it's a fairly technical thing. And I'll, I'll just do a couple slides on it. Some people in here might already be advanced into marketing and, and they might appreciate this. So I figured I'd do it. Uh, so what is a pixel? What is the Facebook pixel? And what does it do? What it does is it communicates, uh, actions that users take back to Facebook. So we have Facebook here. We have some users that come, they came from Facebook. Uh, they go to your application on Venmo, like your borrower app, and then this person completed it. So it sends the data that this person was great back to Facebook. Facebook is refining your ad sets going, okay, let's find more people like that. And it just, it just makes your ad sets a lot more, um, a lot more effective because Finmo is actually communicating back to Facebook, what the uh, actions are from the, uh, that the, that the people are sending there are taking. So it's not just going blind, right? it actually knows when people are doing high value actions. Um, so what it looks like, this is not a mortgage business, this would be an e-commerce, like, like you know, Amazon.com, like an e-commerce store. Um, so what we can see here is the data is sending back uh, different pages people have looked, viewed what the content they're viewing is, uh, how many times products were added to carts, 
um, stuff like that. And it knows obviously these add to cart people are pretty good. So it's going to try and find people that are doing the action you tell it you want. So it'll help it refine uh, in Facebook your ads. It's just, it's easier to demonstrate this with e-commerce than it is with the mortgage brokering. So I just uh, use that instead. Uh, what the Facebook pixel literally is, it's confusing. It's called a pixel. It has nothing to do with visual pixels. It's just a piece of code that goes on a website that sends event data back. You might hear it. It's the same as Google Analytics event tracking code. They're all similar. They just send data back to, um, back to, uh, well, whoever you want, Google Analytics or Facebook, uh, to help you um, get more insight and stuff into uh, who, how people are using your site and refine uh, stuff. So, oh, we also have a Google Analytics integration as well. So it works the same way as the Facebook Pixel one does. So we actually have both. Um, so Finmo makes it easy. All you have to do is take your Pixel ID and then you throw it into, uh, into Finmo under your, your integration settings and just hit save changes. It'll start sending data back to uh, Facebook. Uh, as I said before, we do have Google Analytics as well. The setup process is almost exactly the same. And Google Analytics is good at figuring out customer demographics and drilling into borrow behavior on your website or funnels, et cetera. Um, so here in this, in this example, you can see which city people are visiting from. Like that's not super useful, but I mean, you can really drill down into really uh, in, into almost any kind of data you want with Google Analytics if you if you really want to figure out who your audience is that's, that are that are performing certain actions, which can be helpful for targeting your ads, etc. Uh, if you need help with marketing for basic stuff, our customer success team and myself will definitely help you out. Um, for tricky stuff, um, an actual dedicated advertising agency like Nova is who we recommend their partner of ours. Uh, it's run by a man named Johnny Shrill, who's an excellent marketer. And the cool thing about Nova is uh, they are actually focused on, on doing advertisements and marketing for Canadian mortgage brokers exclusively. They might, I, they might be the only, in, like they might actually be the only team that, that exclusively does that as their niche. Uh, so they actually do know a lot about mortgages, which really helps to advertise, uh, when you're advertising mortgages, mortgage brokering, to actually know about the Canadian mortgage industry. So uh, yeah, we'd highly recommend uh, Nova if you, if you want to um, get heavy into marketing and make, and make it a core part of your uh, brokerage. But for sure, we'll help you out um, as much as we can with any basic stuff you need uh, for your marketing setup. I think that that's the last slide I have here. So that's the end of the, the, end of the presentation there. So if there's any questions, I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions. It's a pretty quick overview. Thank you so much for that presentation, Alex. Um, yeah, if you did have questions after the session, uh, just log into your Finmo account on the bottom right-hand corner. You'll see the chat icon, same icon that you see on Alex's screenshot there. Um, and uh, yeah, he's just pulling it up there. Thank you so much, Alex. No Post problem. your questions there, and um, and Alex will be able to chime in and, and answer anything for you. So. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for joining me today. Thank you, Alex. That was a great presentation. Mm -hmm. And um, for our next training Tuesday, we are open to su suggestions. So if there's a module in uh, Finmo that you would like us to cover, again, please go to the, the chat box and, um, and put your response in there. Also, um, today's session will be, uh, it, it has been recording. We're gonna send it out to you uh, via email. Um, and yeah, by the end of the day, you should receive that. All right, well, that's all. Um, I don't see any questions. So um, again, just let us know if, you have been, if anything else comes up later on. Thank you so much, Alex. Yep, and awesome. everyone, uh, look, forward to, <clears throat> look forward to seeing you on the next training Tuesday in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much. Awesome, have a good day, everyone.